Another thing that I wanted to show you on this job here is we have a sewage ejector pit that's pre-existing. Right? And you can see we've put it inside this six foot wide closet. Now that'll be accessible right inside there. It'll be an unfinished closet. Uh, the, bu the builder already has the discharge line capped and ready to go right here. That's where we'll discharge the uh, two inch line from the pit. And he also has a two inch vent line right up there ready to go with a cap on it that we will connect the vent line from the sewage ejector pit to. So all the, uh, the pre-plumbing was done. All the two inch pre-plumbing PVC work was done by the builder in preparation uh, for this pit to become active. Now, what I wanted to show you here was the, uh, the builder also had the bathroom laid out in this area right over here. All right, he had a, uh, a spot right here in the concrete where if I pull this bucket out of here, there's a two inch pipe down there that goes from, goes from there over to the pit. There we go, thank you. So that's already pre-plumbed in the floor. This is where a, a, uh, I guess a tub or a shower would have been planned by the builder. And over here we had a three inch line in the floor which would have been for uh, a pre-planned toilet location and we had another pipe right over there that was pre-planned for a vanity sink drain all right so this was all done by the builder as the house was being built in preparation for a bathroom in this area right here but we uh, we did what we normally do uh, we moved the bathroom uh, the homeowner does not like this location for the bathroom because they have an exercise area figured into this uh, configuration that we're building for them. So we're moving the bathroom right over there where the guys are working. <clears throat> so what that means is we have to either dig a new sewage ejector pit to run this bathroom. I'll walk over in here. I'm inside the bathroom now. We're going to have a five foot shower right over here where you see the ramp set coming there. So we got a five foot shower here, we're going to have a toilet right here, and a 48 inch vanity right over here. So we're going to be jacking open the floor for the toilet and the shower, and we're also going to be jacking from the bathroom location, the new location, all the way over, and we're going to pick up the original toilet line under the concrete floor from the original builder's bathroom configuration. All right. It's right over here. We get the three inch toilet line right here from the original builder's location running underneath the floor right over, right over to the pit. So we're going to find this pipe, this pipe going from here over to the pit underneath the concrete floor. We'll, we'll, we'll cut a patch here where we figure it's going to be. We'll jack it out. We'll find the pipe and then we'll jack straight over to the bathroom toilet's new location and we'll tie it in. By doing that, we don't have to dig a new sewage ejector pit. All right, so we're going to utilize the uh, the location that the builder gave us, which will save us a lot of time and a lot of labor and materials. You know, uh, we, otherwise we would have had to put in a new sewage ejector pit. So we're saving a, a lot of labor there. That's the main thing because these are very labor intensive. It's a lot easier to just jack four inches of concrete, dig a dig a ditch down about 16 inches than it is to dig one of these babies down into the floor three feet deep. All right, so much, much less labor involved there. So again, uh, my, I think my last two videos, I've talked about the fact that we moved the bathrooms on almost every job, that we probably 90% of the time or better, we never use the existing plumbing that's in the concrete floor from the building. All right, and when we get this jacked open um, and we've got the new uh, path from the new toilet location back over here all tied in. Before we concrete that floor shut, I'll show you exactly, exactly what that involved um, so you have a better visualization of what we're actually going to do here. But again, guys, it's not rocket science. All right, this isn't brain surgery. Because if it was, none of us guys down here, we'd all be unemployed right now because none of us are brain surgeons. Well, maybe, maybe John, maybe John, John, look, he's got his, look, he's going into surgery. Uh-huh. He's got his mask on. <laughs> well, maybe you are a brain surgeon. Maybe. He's operating, ladies and gentlemen.
Okay guys, it's uh, day three on this job. Uh, last time we spoke I was showing you how we were going to tie our uh, existing plumbing from the original builder's bathroom location to our plumbing. All right, we were going to move some things around. Uh, so I'm going to spin the camera around here and I'll show you how we're jacking the floor open here and how we're going to connect the, uh, the new three inch pipe from our sewage ejector pit to the existing plumbing that the builder had under the floor. Remember, we're keeping the sewage ejector, the original sewage ejector, so we don't have to jack the floor open because we're close enough to the original bathroom location that we can do that. And I'm going to show you if you have a similar situation how you can go ahead and utilize the existing sewage ejector pit, keep it in the floor which saves you a ton of time and labor and money um, and how you can tie your existing new plumbing or how you can tie your your brand new bathroom plumbing into that existing underfloor plumbing. Alright, so let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so back over here looking at the original pit, you can see uh, we've got the lid off now. There's a big old four inch pipe coming through there, put in from, from the builder. And passes underneath the floor here. And here you can see where we jacked the floor over. The bathroom's way over yonder, and we had to jack across the floor. It's about uh, 13, 14 feet until we found that four inch pipe. All right, now that four inch pipe went across and tied into the, uh, to the toilet over here. It's kind of all covered up here. Okay, that was the original toilet location right there. So that goes down into the floor there, passes underneath the concrete, and shows up right over here. And that travels straight over and into the pit. So we're keeping the pit, and we're keeping that section of four inch pipe right to this point here. Now we're going to cut it right there, and we're going to use some fittings to turn the plumbing into our trench. And then we're going to shoot it up here to the bathroom toilet, which is going to be right there. We're going to put our flange right down there. There it is right there. We're getting ready to put this together here this morning. And then you can also see that from the toilet location, we've jacked over to where our shower drain is going to be. And there he is. There's Jackie Chan and all of his pride and glory right there. We used him this morning to open up the floor from the shower to the toilet all the way down to the existing sewage ejector four inch pipe and we're going to tie in right there so that way we don't have to jack another big hole in the floor and put another one of these guys in so if you have existing plumbing all right, and this was all going to be plumbed here the shower was going to be here and the toilet was going to be over there on the floor and it was a, it was a whole different setup a whole different bathroom plan it, but it, it didn't work with what we were going to, what we wanted to do with this basement design so we've moved the bathroom to where we'd like her. We've utilized some of the original under the floor plumbing and that sewage ejector pit. I just wanted to show you that because that's one of the questions that I get a lot. I mean, can we, can we reuse the sewage ejector that's already there even though we're moving the bathroom to a different location? Can we, can we still use the pit? Now, if it was on the other side of the basement, 30 feet away, the answer would be no. You, you, you'd never get that much pitch, that much slope back to the sewage ejector pit if, you're, if your shower and your toilet were 30 feet away on the other side of the basement. So the answer would be no in that situation. But here, we were only going about 12 feet. And we can still get enough pitch on that toilet line to that sewage ejector pit, all right? Enough, enough fall, enough slope. If you can get it within, say, maximum of 15, 16 feet, I'd say that would be about the furthest I'd try to reutilize the sewage ejector. It would be about 16 feet away. But we're within 10, 12 feet here, and it's going to work out just fine for us. It's going to save us money, it's going to save us time. Now you can see how much dirt we dug out of that pit. And that's a pretty good pile there. That's about uh, a six foot long pile of dirt that we dug out of there, about two and a half feet tall, came out of that trench. So, you know, I should just bring it to your attention that if you're, if you're planning on renting a jackhammer and doing this by yourself, I'm not going to lie to you, it's, it's labor intensive. And to have a plumbing contractor come in and jack this floor out and reconnect this and, and do everything that you see us doing here underneath the floor, you know, you, you're going to get a several thousand dollar bill from most reputable uh, licensed plumbing contractors to do this kind of heavy, heavy lifting here. But if you have it within yourself to do it, and if you could, you know, bring a couple of your buddies over for the weekend or if you've got family or friends to help you with it, you are going to save yourself a a lot of labor money there and uh, you know if, if you can do it well, hey why not it's it, again it's not rocket science you're just you're just jacking a hole from in a trench from point A to point B 
and digging it out and installing the pipe. But again, that labor price, if you hire a plumber, will be several thousand dollars. All right, so I thought I'd throw that little tidbit at you there. Um, you know, I try to give you as much on the plumbing front as I can when I got these floors jacked open. Now they get them open, they get the pipe in, they get them closed so fast. Sometimes I don't get, I don't have time to get down here with the camera to do a little shooting. Yeah, this one here for sure. I've been wanting to do a video like this because I've only really ever utilized the existing sewage ejector in the floor and tied into it maybe a half a dozen times in 30 years. All right, this is not something that we do very often. Uh, it just worked out on this job here, but. If you got a situation where you're moving the bathroom a couple of feet left or right or you know 10 feet 20 feet is too far if you're going to go 10 feet go ahead and reutilize that that sewage ejector um it's not too hard to figure out which way the pipes are going under the floor you can generally open them up and look down inside the floor uh, and and see if they're if they're on an angle now we knew over here when we looked down at the toilet flange we look down in the floor we can see which way the pipe was pointing it's pretty much going to tell you which way your pipe is going from the toilet to the sewage ejector by just shining a flashlight down in that pipe inside the, the toilet pipe you'll see the turn on the fitting and that'll point you in the direction and then you can pretty much go from there and find that pipe underneath the concrete floor All right, so we got the floor concreted back shut here and the shower's in position. Um, there's the five-foot shower that we purchased. It's a Kohler Sterling five-foot shower. Um, it comes in four pieces. You've seen them in other videos. It's got the five-foot back panel and then the two 34-inch side panels and the five-foot by 34-inch uh, shower pan base itself. A real nice unit, perfect for basements where you can't get a one-piece five foot shower in the basement, which 95% of the time you're not going to be able to. And there you can see our trench. We have our toilet flange in now. They just put the concrete in. The concrete's wet here. They filled it in and uh, our flooring will go right over top of our patchwork then. You can see John down there finishing it out there. Um, so that's how we did it guys. That's how we utilized the existing sewage ejector pit. We kept it and how we um, jacked over, found the original under the floor uh, pipe that was going from the original toilet location over to the pit and tied into it. Saved ourselves a great deal of labor by not having to dig another sewage ejector pit. And here you can see our drain lines are all roughed in. Give you another shot and explanation of what we did here. <clears throat> this is our sink drain, which is inch and a half. All right, then we got our hot and cold water here roughed in in PEX, so we're using the PEX water system. And that drain line goes in from here from the sink, travels down. Right here you can see where we came up in a two inch Y fitting into our vent line, which goes around, back through the walls, and you can see it running along the wall over there and up and ties into the vent location that the builder had put in for us. All right, so we tied our vent line in for our sink. This also vents our toilet. It goes underneath the floor to our shower drain back over there in two inch and then you can see coming from behind the shower there our, our vent line that we tied into the back so our shower is vented as well right? and the shower and the sink vent line right here tie together and then go down and tie into the main vent line which exits the roof of the house that was put in by the builder cold water line going down to our toilet that's our toilet supply line and back in here, I don't know how well you can see that, but down in there is our valve and we've got our hot and cold water coming down behind the shower feeding our valve, which is sticking through the front of the shower here, okay? So that's all been roughed in and ready to go. These water lines are pressurized. There's water in these PEX lines right now. They, they're full of water at full pressure. And we've got our temporary caps and nipples on the ends of our PEX drop ears. And I go through all this plumbing, exactly what we use, why we use it. It's pretty much the same on every bathroom we do. Uh, the only difference is the location of the fixtures, but we do it the same on every job. And if you guys want to learn how to do that, I do have plumbing videos over at the Basement Finishing University, uh, the BFU 2.0. I do have a link in the description below this video if you want to go check that out. 
You can learn how to plumb your own bathroom as well as a bar. We've got a nice big bar over here with a 10 foot top. This is our front bar wall here. And uh, we've got this roughed in for a sink. Right over here will be a 36 inch sink base at the end of the bar. I'm actually behind the bar right now. And you can see all of our GFI circuits that'll be in the uprise to our upper top. Down here we've got our hot and cold water and our inch and a half discharge line. We are going to have a bar sink here. We're going to have one of our laundry tray pumps underneath here. I'll show you how to do that in my bar building series. series. The bar building series is also over at the Basement Finishing University if you want to check that out. I show you step by step how to build a bar very similar to the one that we're going to be putting in on this project. We also show you in that series how to hook up that pump that will be actually inside our 36 inch sink base and plugged into that outlet right there. All right? We're using a bar pump because we're so far away from the main sewage ejector, which is about 40 feet over in that corner. The one we're using for the bathroom was too far away, uh, so we could not use that. So we're going to have to use a pump. We'll be pumping it up into that inch and a half line right there, and that is going to go over and tie into one of the main three inch sewage laterals in the basement. All right, so we've got a bar in this one as well. So we have bar plumbing and bathroom plumbing on this one. The bar plumbing is going to be a pump. The bathroom plumbing is also going to a pump, but it's going to our sewage ejector, which uh, we showed you at the very beginning of this little video here. We never had to dig this up. We never had to dig a new pit. We just jacked our way over here and tied in. All right, so I hope that helps you guys. If you have a a bathroom project in your basement or a bar there's two different ways to get your plumbing drain lines uh, take care of the, the wastewater but uh, I've never talked about jacking the floor open and and using a pre-existing sewage ejector so that now uh, is another option for you guys if the builders already put it in and it's just not in the right spot but it's close enough to where you're relocating the bathroom Hey man, use that existing sewage ejector pit and save yourself a bunch of money. Um, my, my main purpose of this video was just that one technique, reusing pre-existing sewage ejectors. If you like this and it helped you out, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, it helps out our channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the Basement Finishing Man YouTube channel yet, please do. We got a lot more good basement videos coming your way. And one other thing, when you do, if you subscribe to the channel, tick that notification bell, that little bell. If you do that, then every time I put out a new video, you'll get a notification saying I've got new content ready to go. And I do appreciate you guys. Guys, we're about uh, 80,000 subscribers right now, which I never thought that would ever happen. Uh, it's really amazing to me. I, I know there's plenty bigger channels on YouTube with millions of subscribers, but 80,000 subscribers to me is huge. I feel blessed and uh, it's because of you guys that I keep making these videos and uh, I just wanted you guys to know that I do appreciate all the views, the comments and, uh, and everything else that you guys have done to help me build up my channel from no subscribers to over 80,000 subscribers and I think we're like up, up around 20 million views so I wanted to thank you guys for that and I will see you in the next video.